Good morning, friends. How are you feeling this morning? I'm just excited to be here with you. And uh, uh, this morning, I'm, I would like to bring a message of hope to you. I pray that this will be a message of hope. And, uh, and I wanted to start uh, my sermon with uh, a song. You see, and this song comes all the way from Transylvania on the Ukrainian side. And I think I see at least one couple that comes from that region. And uh, I think they will know exactly the, the feel and the music. And uh, at the same time, I hope that uh, all of you will be blessed. I translated the song into, into English. Um, but uh, there is one verse in Ukrainian because in heaven, you, we will speak Ukrainian, of course. And so you will have a taste a little bit of a Ukrainian song about heaven. So may God's name be praised. And if you suddenly feel like you want to sing along, feel free to join me. A song about heaven. You can imagine the mountains of Transylvania. Often we have to raise our eyes and, and look for the hope that is not here. Our governments failed us, people fail us, but God never fails us. Amen. There, beyond the stars of heaven, there, above the highest heaven, is a place prepared for me by Christ the Lord. There I will see my Savior, there I will live forever, I will live forever with my Lord. There I will offer praises to the Lord, there I will know what gives eternal joy and forevermore. Together with my Lord, singing praises to my Lord. There I will offer praises to the Lord. There I will know what gives eternal joy and forevermore. Together with my Lord, singing praises to my Lord. Там на горі високій, там верховина мати, Гей наш злітай до неба наче птах. Там зацвітуть джоржини, там на крутій вершині Будем разом жити ти і я. There I will offer praises to the Lord, there I will know what gives eternal joy and forevermore together with my Lord singing praises to my Lord there I will offer praises to the Lord there I will know what gives eternal joy and forevermore Together with my Lord, singing praises to my Lord. There I will offer praises to the Lord. There I will know what gives eternal joy and forevermore. Together with my Lord, singing praises to my Lord. Singing praises to my Lord. Singing praises to my Lord. May God's name be praised. That's how we 
sing praises to God in Ukraine. And uh, here in Canada, I know that sometimes we have different cultures and, you know, we, we express our joy differently. And uh, I think I have to switch to another clicker here. And uh, in today's sermon, you know, I just would like us to just imagine a little bit of how great God is. Because God is great. Last year, our family went to Astrophysical Observatory here in Victoria, BC. You see it all the way far up on the, on the hill. And um, the reason we went there, because Isaac, Isaac and Isaiah, both of them, they became very interested in all the planets and solar systems. And, and so this was just an incredible experience. We ended up there. We didn't know that there are many volunteers who bring their own uh, telescopes. And uh, there we were able to see the moon. And unfortunately, this video is not, for whatever reason, not working. But I wanted to see, show you how you look inside the telescope. You almost feel like you're there on the moon. You can see the surface so close. And then, uh, right there in that observatory, they give us a little presentation. And they wanted to show us how big the universe is. So one of the presenters showed us this picture, the one that you see on the screen. And uh, he said to us, how big do you think our planet is? Now, compared to other planets, we are pretty big to some planets in our solar system. But compared to other planets in our solar system, we're quite small. If you look at this picture, you know, our planet is just very tiny compa compared to Jupiter and Uranus. Actually, 63 planet Earths can fit inside Uranus. And in Jupiter, 1,300 Earths can fit inside Jupiter. That's incredible, isn't it? But then they continue, they say, but that's not all. If you compare our planet, the size of our planet, to the sun, it's very hard to even see or notice our planet. That's how big the, our sun is. And uh, the presenter would say, would ask us, do you see the planet? And yeah, some kids really had fun trying to find planet Earth. And then they said, and that's not all. If you think, well, one million Earths can fit inside our sun, just in case you didn't know. And they say, that's not all. There are other objects in our galaxy that are much bigger than our sun. One of them, by the name of Arcturus, is so big that 17,000 suns can fit inside Arcturus. And the presenter would say, do you see planet Earth now? <laughs> can you see it? I don't see it anymore. I can barely see Jupiter. And then they say, and that's not all. There is another star in our galaxy called Canis Majoris. It's so big that 9.3 billion of our suns can fit inside this one star in our galaxy. Just think about it. In six seconds, this star produces more energy than our sun in one year. That's pretty big. Can you see our planet here? You can barely see our sun. And then they said if you were to fly an airplane, it would take you 1,100 years just to circle the star at the speed of 900 kilometers an hour. That's pretty big. And then they would say, that's not all. <laughs> they said, you see, that little tiny dot in our galaxy, that is our solar system with all our planets, Mercury, Mars, Saturn, planet Earth, and our sun is located right there in that little tiny dot. Did you know that? I know you've covered this in school, but it's so amazing to see this. We are actually, according to astronomers, we are in the safe part of the galaxy. We're in the safe part of the galaxy. And only this last week, they revealed to the whole world the first image of the black hole in our galaxy. Have you guys heard about that? This black hole is so powerful that one German scientist called it the gates of hell. He says that this hole is actually the result of a collapsed star and then it creates such a powerful vacuum or a powerful magnetic force that anything that goes through it simply disappears, including light. 
And any planet that dares to come even close to this black hole is suddenly thrown with such force that within literally seconds, this whatever object can fly close to it is thrown on the orbit with such speed that, that it just makes no sense how any planet can even survive that. And that is just amazing. That's how big our God is. And that is just our galaxy. And then the presenter said, and that's not all. One day the telescopes looked in the sky and they concentrated on the patch of the sky as big as your thumb. And they were looking intently for many days and weeks and took this famous image that you see. Because in this little patch of the sky, they found not stars, they found billions of galaxies in just a little patch of the sky as big as your thumb. That's how big God is. Isn't he great? That's how big God is. And today I would like you to remind you in the sermon today that as God's people, we often forget the size of our God. And in the scripture reading today, we will learn that people of Israel who even had the word of God went in their day-to-day -day business forgetting about the greatness of God. And that's in our Bible. Actually, it's one of the most fascinating stories I actually heard it at Lakeview Christian School morning worship, and I really appreciate uh, Mr. B, who always has little worship with all the staff. And I came only once, and that only once blessed me so much that I prepared the sermon for you, just to remind you of this story in the Bible. The Bible actually says the Philistines assembled to fight Israel with 3,000 chariots, 6,000 charioteers, and soldiers as numerous as the sand on the seashore. Now just think of it. <laughs> 3,000 chariots, 6,000 charioteers, and soldiers as, as much as numerous as the sand on the seashore. Now if you were the pastor or the leader of that Israel church, would you go into battle with the enemy of this size? You know, the Bible says... When the Israelites saw that their situation was critical and that their army was hard-pressed, they hid in the caves and thickets among the rocks and in pits. And that is our natural thing to do as Seventh-day Adventist Christians. As soon as trouble comes, boy, there are people that run for the hills. Uh-oh, I have trouble. Life is just too hard, Pastor. Or life is so difficult. There is no way we can overcome this problem. It's just too big. We don't have enough finances. We don't have enough equipment. But I want you to listen to the story because Saul chose 3,000 men from Israel against the army that is as numerous as the sand on the seashore. And I can imagine Saul would go from house to house and say, Hey guys, come on, we have a battle. We have God's work to do. So 3,000 men came and said, Yes, we will do. The nominating committee nominated 3,000 people. But when you come to verse 15, the Bible says when Saul looked around, he found only 600 people left from 3,000. I don't know if I'm speaking to somebody, but uh, it often happens that at the end of the year, Pastor, I don't know how about Rest Haven, but in Victoria, we have all these nominations, all these deacons, all these elders, all these people, and suddenly by the time February comes, you look around and you say, Where are the half of the deacons go? Where is the half of the, where's the praise team? Where is the people that said they were singing? Where are they? Where are they? <laughs> They numbered about 600, and things get bad. It says, uh, so on the day of the battle, none of the people of Israel had even a sword or a spear. So they came with plowshares, picks, and axes, and sickles, like a bunch of communists, right? With uh, axes and sickles. I mean, I, I just can see the Soviet Union somehow in this Bible verse. And the hammer, that's right. Folks, this story is just unbelievable. Things get from, they just get so bad. And, uh, they, and things get worse. It, it, look at this. God rejects King Saul's leadership. 
God rejects it. And uh, that's a terrible thing for it to happen. Sometimes God rejects leadership. And, uh, and uh, you know, that is something that is in the Bible. And in this particular verse, 1 Samuel 13, 13, it says, Samuel said to King Saul, you have not kept the commandment. The Lord your God gave you, but now your kingdom must end. And of course, uh, the reaction of God's people should be like this phrase. So run for the hills, right? <laughs> I mean, everything is bad. I mean, this church, they don't even have the equipment. I mean, in today's modern reality, it would be probably, you know, in this church, uh, their praise team, there's nobody who can even play instruments. They, they are totally, I mean, this is totally empty. Uh, nobody is doing anything. I mean, and even the pastor is rejected by God. I am not coming to this church. Would you go to that church? Would you go back and say, well, here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. The Bible says, well, this is the lesson. It's always tempting to give up when faced with difficulties. I want you to repeat what I just said. Let's say it together. It's always tempting to give up when faced with difficulties. And I am the, the best example of that. I have been sometime, sometimes pressed to the limit where I literally feel that this is it. You remember there was this guy on the airplane... Um, who, who was serving some customers, you know, and some, some, somebody was giving him a hard time. And uh, so this flight attendant simply pulled an emergency exit and just left the airplane in style. Have you heard that? That was a few years ago. You never heard of that story? It was all across um, all in the newspapers. Sometimes I feel like that. When I come and I feel like just pulling the emergency and just leaving and leaving everything. Because it's not fun to go through difficulties. Let's be honest, folks. It is not fun. How many of you can raise your hand and say, I cannot just wait for another difficulty to come. I'm just looking forward for trouble. None of us. But you know, God allows these things to happen in our lives in order to test us. Actually, in uh, Israel, when they were in the desert, there's actually a Bible verse that says, God says, I allowed you to suffer in the desert to see what was in your heart. So Sydney Church, what is in your heart this morning? I asked the same question to Victoria. What is in your heart? Because you know the Bible has other spiritual lessons that we are learning. God's army church may contain spiritually corrupt leaders, but Pastor Kosovan is not in charge. God is in charge. I didn't hear amen. <laughs> My goodness. Let me just say this differently. Pastor Astavus is not in charge. God is in charge of his church. Amen? You see, sometimes we just don't understand that, that God is the one in charge. Jesus is the true leader of his people, not King Saul, King David, or any pastor. No matter what congregation or how the leadership is even, you may feel is rejected. The leader is the Lord when you go to that church. You don't quit God's work because of someone you don't like. You work for Jesus. Oh man, I, oh I wished I would have known that in my life. So many times I just forget that I work for Jesus. I don't work for the conference. I don't work for the Canadian Union. I work for Jesus and to Him alone. You know, everything else is secondary. The primary, the only reason I come to church, not because of a fancy praise team, not because of some special, the, something that I like. I come to church, the primary reason is because of Jesus Christ. And number four, you don't quit just because circumstances are extremely difficult. Oh boy. And did we learn that lesson when it comes to Lakeview Christian School? Let me tell you folks something. At least I'll speak on behalf of Victoria. In Victoria, after we, what we have experienced with Lakeview Christian School, at least I myself, sometimes I'm so bold that some of my elders are saying, listen, Pastor, you need to kind of come down, you know, because you have to be careful. Because folks, let, let's be honest. 
the things we experience in Lakeview Christian School is something that I have never even read in books. Just two years ago, let me remind you, the whole church says we don't need the school. Let's vote ourselves out of here. There is no money. There is no people. There is no students. And I took these pictures two years ago walking the empty halls of Lakeview Christian School and thinking, could this be that this is the last time I'm looking at the most beautiful school property in Canada, maybe even in North America and the world? Could it be that this is the last time? And I'm telling you, these are the pictures that I took. And especially tears came to my eyes when I walked into the preschool and I knew that my boys were just starting to go there and only to find out that we had to shut it down for one year and not knowing that we will ever get it back. Not knowing. It was so discouraging. And then I took the picture of the gym thinking, you know, wouldn't it be nice to have the gym packed with kids one day? Lord, are you that big? Lord, do you think you can help us gain victory and, and help the school explode in growth? Lord, are you that big? Can you really listen to our prayers? Can you help us? Oh, folks, today, you know, I can show you so many pictures of just school being so, I mean, just exploding in growth. What you see here is last two years, that would probably be the entire school just sitting there at the table. Today, that's just a Bible class of students who want to study the Bible. God is so amazing and that's why when you look in the story, 1 Samuel 14, 6 says, Jonathan said to his armor bearer, perhaps the Lord will help us for nothing can hinder the Lord. And I want you to pay attention that out of all of Israel, it was only these two that actually decided to do something. And this is the central Bible verse that made a major impact on my life because they said he can win a battle whether he has many warriors or only a few let's read this together shall we he can win a battle whether he has many warriors or only a few wow <laughs> you know folks let's be frank in the last few years in the last few years our numbers have significantly go down in terms of our worship attendance, both in Sydney and Victoria. And today the message that I'm preaching is for those who are sitting here and for those who are not sitting here and hopefully will be watching the sermon, those who for whatever reason have stopped coming because of for whatever reason. This actually sermon and this message is for both groups. And listen carefully. He can win a battle whether he has many warriors or only a few. And this is something we need to remember. Sometimes I can be so discouraged, come for Sabbath school and see only five people. Sometimes I come to Victoria uh, prayer meeting and I one day counted only three people. And out of those three people, somebody said, Pastor, don't you worry. Didn't you just preach that he can win a battle whether he has many or few? And didn't he say where there is two or three gather in my name, I will be there with them? He did say that. Because you see, the battle is not ours. The battle belongs to the Lord. God is so big. It doesn't matter how small you are or how others think small you are. Because with God, you are the majority. And so here's the spiritual lesson. The lesson is that with God, you are always majority. Always. Even if there is only two or three. If God is with you, things can happen. And listen to this. God is never intimidated by the size of the enemy or the complexity of the problem. God is never intimidated. You see, that's the problem with me because I get intimidated. Sometimes if things don't go my way, I get upset and I get really angry and anxious and worried. But the Bible says, look up to heaven because God is so big and furthermore with him there is always enough resources to resist pressures and win battles always enough last year Victoria Church was minus thirty thousand dollars in the local church budget just by the time November came and we said this is it we cannot meet our budget only to have the greatest offering in December of almost thirty thousand dollars coming back in just one month <laughs> 
I mean, we almost had, literally had tears in our church board meeting thinking, you know, this is just unbelievable. In the last moment, $30,000 came in just one month. Unbelievable. God provided because he knows and we know that we are part of his mission. 1 Samuel chapter 14, 13 says this. And the Philistines fell before Jonathan. I want you to pay close attention to this. Because the Bible says that the Philistines fell before who? Before who? How is this possible that the whole army of the Philistines collapsed with just Jonathan showing up and saying, Hello everybody, I come here in the name of the Lord my God. Who are these Philistines? I'm speaking to some of you because I don't know what challenges you are going through in life. Maybe you are outnumbered in your own families. Maybe there are people in your own family who do not even share your views or, or your values as Christians. And you feel that you are just a minority. But I want you to know, folks, that you do not have to be part of some big group. Actually, it can be just you and God. And the two of you are the majority. You see... And the Philistine fell before Jonathan and his armor bearer destroyed those who came behind them. Only two guys against the people and the army as big as the sand on the seashore. That's what the Bible says. And suddenly panic broke out. Now folks, listen carefully. This is interesting. Do you know when God comes to your rescue, the finances will not make any sense. <laughs> it happens all the time. The finances will not make any sense. Uh, the numbers will not end up. But what happens is that when you invite God, supernatural things are going to start happening in your life. Something that even science cannot explain. You see, when God is with you, suddenly your enemy may simply have a panic. And that's why Jonathan and just his armor bearer were able to take on the whole army. Because God sent a supernatural help. But that's, what, that, that's not all. You know what else God did? Something we don't like here on the island. And just then, an earthquake struck. <laughs> God can do those things sometimes. Just because if you are with God, and if you stand for what God stands for, He will bring supernatural miracles in your life. Do you believe that? Well, Jonathan and his armor, they believe that. They believe that with God, you can, you can gain victory. But here is uh, an interesting twist to the story. You know, there was this king who was always grumpy, always critical. You know what his name was, right? Do you meet people in this life who are always grumpy, always critical, never happy? There's never, nothing is good. You know, it's interesting. Two people can come to church and uh, one will say, this was an amazing worship service. The praise team was good. I mean, Scott Bastien and, uh, and the violin, Mr. McKibben, they were so good. They were singing the congregation. And there will be another person who will say, the church service was horrible. There was no praise team. It was just Scott by himself sitting at the piano. And, and Patrick with his violin and nobody was singing. I mean, I'll never come into Sydney church because they, it's just an empty church. There you go. You will always have these two people in your life. And they're always present whether in Sydney or Victoria. Do you believe it? Nothing is good. And King Saul was like that. You, I, I don't know. Maybe your husband is like that. Always nagging. And nothing is good. You don't even know where to stand. Or where to sit. Or what to say. Always like that. Somebody actually raised their hand. Yes, brother. All right. Well, there you go. My goodness. You know, I have to tell Victoria, Sydney is such an exciting church. People talk back like in the Caribbean church, you know, back to the preacher. That's, that's amazing. Praise the Lord. Folks, I want to encourage you today. Don't give up because listen to this. Listen to this. We need people like Saul in our lives. Believe it or not. It's actually in the Bible. Just listen. Just bear with me. Yeah, Saul was really, he was angry. Instead of building leadership he wanted to kill le leadership I mean he wanted to get rid of David and and trust me I've met people who just wanted to get rid of me uh, uh, just just because just because wanted to get rid of me you're done we we're done with you you know it started even back in my school when theology professor in Berman University once told me Mary and change your major you have too much accent no one will hire you're wasting your loan because these presidents will come and they will hear you and you will say good morning and they will say we're not hiring this guy Go and change your major. And I almost did. But then came Renko Stefanovic. And uh, you know this guy. 
from Yugoslavia. And he says, good morning, brothers and sisters. I come to you to be professor in Burman University. And I say, praise the Lord. If this guy made it, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. Thank you, Jesus. If this guy made it, I'm going to make it, man. And uh, today, listen carefully. Today, Ranko Stefanovic is the top head department leader of the Adventist Church at Andrews University. A guy with so much accent that some people literally have to ask each other, what did he just say? Believe it or not. And his favorite, favorite phrase was, Marian, even Arnold Schwarzenegger has an accent and he's a cool guy. Don't you worry about this. You know, there you go. Folks, it's so easy to be negative and I, and I fail miserably myself because sometimes I'm so negative. I'm just so negative. Why are we so negative? For Samuel 14, 20, it says, Then Saul and all his men rushed out to the battle. Do you see what happened? <laughs> Saul, who was so critical and was so distant, suddenly when he saw things happening, suddenly he says, hey, wait, wait a minute. Let's join Jonathan. And I want to tell you something. You know, don't give up on people who left the church. And I, I hope they are listening, both in Sydney and Victoria. We love you and we miss you. The fact that you left, yeah, I'll be honest with you, it's a little bit upsetting because, you know, I can brag and say, you know, yeah, we've been fighting here, you know, with swords and, and plowshares and, and, and hammers. And where were you? Well, but that would be wrong, you see. We need to encourage each other. Those, are, those people who stopped coming, you know, it could be that God is also using them to test us as well. Have you ever thought of that? He's testing us just to see what's in our heart. Because, you know, are we coming here because of Jesus or are we coming here because we like somebody or not? Well, and then listen to this. Even more interesting, even the Hebrews who had previously gone over to the Philistines. What? That is the most upsetting verse. Apparently, there were some Jews who joined the enemy. That's how much they hated Israel, even though they were Israel too. I mean... And they joined who? Jonathan. Now, if I was Jonathan, I would say, and sometimes I say that. <laughs> I, you know, anyways, I preach, I preach to myself, say, what are you doing here? You are the enemy, man. You've been saying all kinds of garbage about the church. Who, what are you doing here? We don't need you here. Well, but please notice, maybe another sermon needs to be, you know, I'm working on this. Bear with me. You know, it's interesting that, that uh, these guys uh, joined Jonathan. They were not there also complaining and pointing fingers and, and saying, well, now, now I'm coming back. You know, and some people like to come back in style and say, now I'm back, you know, and, and this and that. But, but you see, those of you who are not coming to church and you're watching, I just want you to know you are important too. And the sooner you join God's army, the, the, the most wonderful, precious spirit of unity is going to prevail. In, in both churches and around the world, you know. And this is what happened in Israel. Proverbs 16, 7, listen carefully. This is a very difficult verse. Even, f I mean, I said even for me, uh, for me as well. It says, when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. You know, sometimes when, when we have enemies, it could be that, yeah, it could be that we made some mistakes. Maybe we said some things in a harsh way. Or maybe we said some things that, or maybe we just didn't do anything except, except uh, you know, there is some other thing in our life that we are doing. And the Lord simply says that if your ways please the Lord, even your enemies will live at peace with you. That's a very powerful statement. 1 Samuel 14, 22 says, likewise, the men of Israel who were hiding in the hill country. There you go of Ephraim, they joined the chase when they saw. You see, some people don't come to church because they need to see. You see, they need to see some success. As soon as there is success, they're going to come and join. Even though those of you who may be watching and are not here, I want you to know, don't wait until it's success. Don't wait until the school is going to be 150 students. Just come right now because God needs you in His rank. Amen? Absolutely. When they saw the Philistines running away, then... They, they came, all right? 
And then as we go to the next slide, and suddenly my, my clicker stopped working. So please help me to change to the next slide. It's not working. It's not working. So yeah, everyone is important. And next slide, please. First Samuel 14, 23 says the following. Listen carefully. So the Lord saved Israel that day. And next. They went from cynicism to optimism. They went from complaining to praising God. They went from disunity to harmony with each other. They went from hating to loving each other. They went from... And all this because of two guys with big faith. Two guys with big faith. Isn't that amazing? Folks, I want to let you know something. I want to let you know something. It, all, all it takes is just one person to change things around. Become more positive. It doesn't mean that you, you may not you know, criticize or may not disagree with anyone. But maybe you will just be more positive. And uh, even if somebody is not nice to you, you're simply going to say, you know what, I am here because of Jesus Christ. And I am going to set a new standard. I'm going to be so positive that even if somebody comes to me and says, I don't like you. And you're going to say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is, this is, a, this is something that uh, is amazing. Somebody noticed me. I must be doing something. Right? And uh, if we go to the next slide. Yeah, the clicker stopped working. So, yeah, I want to tell you just one last story here at the end of my sermon. I went to Vancouver last year to visit one of our church members. He was in the hospital there. And I was walking and uh, walked inside the elevator. And suddenly uh, a nice lady just approached me and she said, you must be the pastor. I said, yes. And I'll be honest with you, I was in a hurry because I was going to visit this man in the hospital. But I had to drive all the way to Alberta. And I didn't want to drive in the dark over the, you know, the, the Coca-Cola. I didn't want to drive in the dark there. So I just needed to do it fast. And she said, Pastor, can you please visit my daughter? My daughter, she is dying of cancer, brain tumor, glioblastoma. Can you please just pray with her? And I said, well, how can you say no to that? I said, you know what, I will, I will visit my church member and then I will come. What the room number, what name? And then I went there and uh, only to find this wonderful young lady that you see here on the screen. Never seen her before. Her name is Jamie. And uh, she could barely walk. The doctors were giving her only a few months to live. And I simply prayed beside her. And the mother and I exchanged the phone numbers. And, and I'll be honest with you. I got so busy with my life. You know, we have a lot of things in Victoria happening, you know, the new church building, the, it's always something, right? And I literally, I kept in contact for another month or two. And then I've heard the tragic news that Jamie passed away. Now fast forward that for another six months. When I was preaching the sermon in Victoria, I was thinking, how should I end my sermon? And that was at eight o'clock in the morning. And so suddenly, I get a text message at 7.55 a.m. It goes bing. And my first reaction, oh no, it must be this member from my church. It's always waking me up. But I better take a look. So I look. And it said, Pastor, this is the mother of Jamie. Just wanted to send you this video clip to encourage you. Today I'm going to play this video clip for you. It's actually a song. And I want you to pay close attention to the words of this song. Because this song just immediately brought tears to my eyes. And it really connects with this message of how God, how big He is, and how He can raise us from where we are. So please listen carefully. A wonderful song from a mother whose daughter passed away. I forgot about her, but she didn't forget about me. She ministered to me months later just by texting. So I want you to just change the next slide. And then please do the changings as the words, the lyrics will go. And 
and uh, I'm going to start the song on this side. There is going to come a second verse where you will have a slide where that will say, please stand and join in singing. I really want you to do this because the message of the song is so powerful. I think that each one of us needs to literally sing along with this song. Okay? So here it comes. You may be someone that is discouraged. May the song bring you blessing. I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure. the sum of every high and every low Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know the first time you're singing folks but join try your best in you I find my worth in you I find my identity you say I am lost when I can't feel a thing you say Father, oh Lord, help us to believe that we are much more with you than without you. Oh Lord, help us. I pray for the, this wonderful church, the Rest Haven Seventh-day Adventist Church. May you bless them. 
May you multiply them and may you bring more victories to them. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated.